What the hell difference does it make? Yeah, yeah, boy. Burns, I told you more than once. That horse is outlaw, as outlaw as you can get. He has to be broke nice and easy. Afraid Vern just can't do things nice and easy. Well, hands around here, build a decent breaking pin. I'd have tamed him. We're obliged to you, stranger. Old Vern there had been drugged to raw meat if you hadn't happened along. I'd be Harry Dreyer. I'm manager of the Tyree Grants. This here's Libby Tyree. Hugh Smith, Lady Kentucky. Oh. Burn boy, the man just saved your life. Don't you think you ought to thank him proper? No thanks needed. Yeah, I guess I got myself too tangled up to see where you took that shot from. Turn that ridge. It's a hell of a shot. Plains rifle, huh? Mm-hmm. 50 caliber. Libby, I think you'd best be going back to the ranch. Your pa's gonna be wondering what happened. <laughs> yeah, there's some pair to draw to. But they be the center of John Tyree's world. Your pa, huh? Well, Libby's pa. Vern's pa died when he was nine year old. And John's been sharing everything with him ever since, including the Tyree name. Come on, he'll be wanting to meet you. Is that him? Will Smith, this be John Tyree. I heard what you've done. You're either a lucky man, Mr. Smith, or the best shot in this whole world. Well, sir, maybe a little bit of both. Well, we owe you a powerful debt of gratitude just the same. Yeah, I'm just glad I came along when I did. Well, if you're not in any hurry to get somewhere, you're sure welcome to stay the night. No hurry, sir. Good. Thanks, Gary. Son. Yeah, no, sir, not too much. I was raised on a farm. I expect that's a little different. Yeah, big difference. You willing to give it a try? How do you mean? I'm offering you a job. I appreciate that, sir. I can sure use the work. Good. Oh, well, that room in the house is yours for as long as you like. Bunkhouse will be fine. I'm sorry. Bunkhouse is full. Oh, our breakfast is about ready, and Libby don't like it if we're late. Them old shafts have been down the trail, but I reckon they still got a few miles in them. Getting to some brush around here, you'll be glad you have them. That's mine and nice I Harry. Thanks. We'll be gathering them in just beyond that ridge, so you join up when you can.
Morning. Morning. No sin to call me by name. It's Libby. Libby do just fine if you'd be all right with you. All right with me. You don't go anywhere without it, do you? Well, yeah, well, day is coming this rifle's gonna earn my keep. How's that? Prize money, shooting matches. All I ever figured on doing since I was a boy. Where? Oh, Denver, Abilene, places like that. Oh, I never been no further than town. 50 miles most. I don't believe in going places. Yeah. I'm glad you're staying here. Yeah, for a little while anyway. Maybe I can learn the cowboy some. Might come in real handy later on. Then where are you going? Well, I don't know. West. California, maybe. Morning, Vern. Look, Vern, if I'm gonna be around here a spell, maybe you and I ought to try to get along, huh? thing around out there in the brush, so maybe you can put it inside for me, huh? All right.
you're a gold virgin. I figure it's Yaki. Hey, let me see that. Apache. You learn real fast. Third steer this month. Then I say we have to do something about this. In the morning. I heard you telling Pa you'd be leaving soon. Hey, I've been thinking on it. Why? Yeah. Can't stay in one place too long without trouble showing up. I don't know what you mean. I killed a man. A war. Yankee sniper. Right after he killed my pa. You saw it happen? Yeah. Yeah, he got me too in the shoulder. Before he could finish it, I killed him. Put me on the move. Kill the Yankee here, one of the enemy. They've been hunting for me ever since. That's when I took to using the name of Smith. Real name's Cardiff, Libby. You, Cardiff. Cardiff? Yeah. Well, you can stay here. They won't find you here. Yeah, sooner or later. I don't want to be any trouble down in your pa. He... Oh, he's been good to me. Think about staying. It beats running. against this gun's a foolish notion. Savvy? The others got away. Well, he's hardly more than a boy. Well, at least we got one to set an example. I say we hang him. And we'll get back to the others. Can't kill a man for being hungry. Well, what do you say? We just let him run off. Maybe we ought to have him up to the house tonight for dinner, huh? We have an extra place. That'll do, Vern. Well, you kill his buck. You mean more trouble. Bring down the rest of his tribe on us. Yeah. When we let him get away, they'll be right back here killing more steers. Yeah, I suppose. You? What would you do? Brand him. Brand him and send him home. Brand? It hurt like hell. He'd be carrying it the rest of his life to remember us by. Harry? Burn? All right, I'll do it. No. Uh -uh. I'll do it.
go off without me. I ain't going off nowhere. Harry sent me out to hunt down a deer. Oh. You got mine, Libby. Well, I can dress out a deer faster and better than any hand on the Tyree. Besides, I know where they are. Oh, mule. Well, we better get loaded up and get out of here. Libby. Matter with you, girl. Why didn't you let me help you? Well, if I'd have known you had such a fondness for all this dirty work, I'd have let you have at it. You know, if your pa and Vern knew he's up here with me, they'd be putting the wind in my back. I just wish you'd stop thinking on me as a child. It's bad enough they're treating me that way, let alone you. I'm not treating you like a... Then I ask you to do me this. What? Take a look. Take a good look. Tell me what you see. Oh, damn. Do you see a child or a woman? Damn. Damn what? Well, damn near, yeah. Damn near. Damn you! I am a woman, Hugh Cardiff. And I have feelings, just like any other woman. Just take it easy, girl. Just take it easy. You're getting yourself... What? You're getting yourself all heated up, that's what. I better be washing this off. The buzzer will be following us home. <laughs> down there. Be back. from Hugh Cardiff.
zoom out. You. Well, uh, would you be, uh, going in? See Libby, Mr. Tyree. I know it was Vern attacked you first. But he had a reason. And he might have thought he did. But I sure did nothing I'm ashamed of. You were naked in front of my daughter. Vern tell you that? Well, he's lying. Because I didn't know why it was. Why don't you ask Libby, she'll tell you the way. That the way you repay our kindness? Burns not my blood son, but I raised him as if he was. If it comes down to who I believe, it's his word I have to take. And I believe him. Yes, sir. I understand that. But let me tell you something. I love Libby, Mr. Tyree. I tried like hell not to. But a man never put up such a losing fight. You saved Vern's life. Now I am giving you yours. And that cancels any debt between us. So you take your life, mister. And you go. <laughs> I kissed her, Harry. I kissed her. Nothing else. You boy, you could talk till the snow flies. Ain't nothing gonna change that mind. You best be the one, boy. Yeah. You, I wished you luck. Thanks, Harry. Thanks for everything. What's more right than that? Now, I'm normal in a saddle tramp. On the move. Looking for work. Sleeping anywhere. What difference does that make as long as we're together? Starving always makes a difference. When I told you, one of these days that old rifle's gonna make my life. When it does, I'll be coming back for you. Please take me with you. Oh, maybe. Maybe I can. I just can't. I don't want to 
wait. It's up to you. If you do, I'll, I'll come for you. How long? Dr. George P. Bogart, world's finest traffic shot. Yeah, I heard of him. Oh. I reckon he's getting ready for the big shooting match tomorrow. I reckon. It's going to be a thousand dollars going to the winner. Not to mention the side bets. It's going to be a lot of money. that gray. Come on. What are the odds on fish play? Seven to one, sir. But don't let that discourage your bet. Mr. Bragg, plain A fine shot. It'll be a good bet, sir. Whiskey. Two hundred on Bragg. Clean it. Fifty on Bogartis. Fifty dollars on Doc Bogartis. Yes, sir. That's a cautious bet. You're going to die broke, my friend. Uh, little problem. That's not your favorite gentleman. We got Jenkins at twenty to one. Morrison at thirty to one. Little one at fifty. Come on, please. Little more pink in the cheek there. Come on. Oh, no, not yet. Come on, man. <laughs> Get close. <laughs> come on, come on. Excuse me, can I buy you a drink? I guess. Drink here. <laughs> I'm a little with the flesh part, sir. Yeah, this ain't no time to be shy. Hey, here you go. Stop it. Hold it. Just leave that lady alone. Come on, 
Well, what I was about to say is that my name is Caleb Rice. That's nice. <laughs> Hugh Smith. I know who I am, mister. Who in the hell are you? Caleb Rice. Looking at you in the saloon last night. I've seen you looking. I've seen you shoot up in Santa Fe. Yeah. I figure you'll be going to the shooting contest. You mind if I ride along with you? Up to you. I don't talk much. That's okay. I can do talking. Nice day. Warm. Not many clouds either. A little stream right down here. That plane rifle? Yeah. Might heavy, isn't it? It shoots a big ball. Well, <clears throat> you take old Doc Bogardus. Got him a Winchester heat rifle. Special made. Light as a feather. Colts, Rice. Well, I guess I am. I know who you are. <laughs> Ooh, son. I've seen you shoot a time or two. I'm sure you did. And this business better knows competition. You're not probably in the best. Pistol shot in these here parts. Well, except for Wild Bill Hickok. You ain't gonna be here. Well, then you got a chance. A thousand dollars a lot of money for fellas like you and me. Yeah. A fella like Doc Bogardus, that just pays for the whiskey. He didn't ride all this way for no piddling thousand dollars. Side bets. The money's in side bets. Yeah. How much money have you got? So. I figured it'd be getting about 20 to 1 odds. So put your money on Caleb Rice. That's the side bets I was talking about. I do any bet on the bet on myself. No problem. Set your odds at about thirty to one or so. Yeah. How they do it when they don't know you. There he is. That's Doc Bogardus right there. Yeah. I seen him yesterday when I was coming in. I think you can hold your own with him. I know you can. What does he call him, Doc? 
scared. Well, that's what he was. He had a little practice back east somewhere. Hello, Doc. Remember me? Yeah. Not the town, but the face for sure. Denver. Name's Dolly. I remember that, too. He had a good time. <laughs> I remember that, too. <laughs> you believe in reunions? No, ma'am, not during business time. Later? Maybe. Maybe we can spread a rumor around that there's a contagious disease like smallpox or something and we can rattle it. Only a short time left to get to the Nothing's gonna take his mind off what he's aiming at. Sam Thompson! Fitz Bragg! Ephraim Jenkins! You boys got your bets down here? What? No, no. no. Ain't you Caleb Rice? Yes, sir, I am. Boy, you're 20 to 1. I bet on myself I was in your place. I would. Well, I'm figuring on betting. Fifty dollars on Caleb Rice. Let me check out the line here. You plan to wager bet, son? Yeah, well, the smart money seems to be on old Doc Bogardis. These other shooters here than Bogardis. Sure, Bogardis gets all the hoopla. He's getting old, and there's bound to be somebody here that he'll be. Yeah. Who, for instance? Calvin Ludlow. Word is, he's another Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Billy Dixon. Folks say he puts him in mind of Texas Jack. Yeah. What would the odds be on someone nobody's ever heard of? Oh, 40 to 1. 40 to 1. And here's one right here, Hugh Carter. He's down from Montana, what you might call a dark horse. You see him shoot? Why, many a time, better than most here. Last chance, boy, you gonna get your bet down? $30 on your dark horse. 30 Oh, Carter. Now I need your name, boy. Carter. Hugh Carter. And I ain't from Montana. Take your position, gent. Numbers one through six. Shooters will stand six on the line. Any miss out of the first 20 shots the shooter is disqualified. From there on, it's the best out of a hundred. Shoot at will. Throw. Yes! Number six, you're off the line. Who's that old fella down there? You mean the one with the red beard down there? Yeah. Well, that's one of the famous ones. That's Fitz Bragg. Disqualification number two and number five. Caleb Rice, number seven. Fitz Bragg, number eight. Good luck. Get ready, 
Anderson. Shot these glass balls before? Nope. Plane driver, huh? Lucky. You are disqualified, Jack. Shoot it up, please. with a score of 96 out of 100. We now have a three-way tie between Mr. Caleb Wright, Mr. Fritz Sprague, and Doc Bogart. With Hugh Carter still in the running. Shooting, son. Thank you, sir. You Cardiff, huh? Yes, sir. Folks say they never heard of you. If you keep shooting like that, they will. Yeah. He used to go by the name of Hugh Smith. Yeah, Hugh Smith, I've heard. Uh, son, would you bring this bucket of water over here, please, sir? Mind if I take a look? Sir, here, she's hot. Yeah. Yeah, heavy work with a long rifle like this. Whew. I started out myself with a plains rifle. <laughs> no, no harm to your rifle, sir. You got my word on that. <laughs> Here. Take her, run a dry patch through her and put on a light coat of oil. She'll be just like brand new. Now, if it starts heating up on you again, you just Stick her right back in that bucket of water. Go ahead with your shooting. It's a pleasure to watch you work. Thanks. Now he's hurt. 
Yeah, it's a shoulder. I figured that plane's rifle was too heavy for this kind of shoot. No, it's more than that. Oh. something, Doc? You might be sorry you taught him that little trick. Maybe.
Sharpshooters. What do you pay around here? Piecework. What do you mean, piecework? Good shooter. Make himself $50 a day. Hell, that ain't bad at all. You're sure rude. I've got my fill of shooters. He's a couple of herders, though. What's that pay? Dollar a day. Grub. I didn't ride for two days to herd. Let's get the hell out of here. No, I didn't either, but this guy says some of these guys are making $50 a day. That doesn't do us any good. Well, they're bound to have a pretty good bankroll. You want the job or don't you? Down 30 of them today. <laughs> and they just stand there, whole. Oh, you shoot them. They don't budge. Now, I've heard they're hard of hearing. <laughs> like shooting bottles off a fence. Mm. 50 a day, and I'm going to be a rich man. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> hey, mister, isn't there some kind of a quota or lemon on these buffalo? You shoot 10, maybe 12 buffalo a day to feed the rail men. And then the rest you shoot for hides. Hides, gentlemen. Hides. A lot of money in these hides. Hides. What do you do with the meat? Coyotes eat them, I reckon. Or left or right. There's some natural shoot down there. You boys go down there, put them up this way. We'll take care of the rest. Real sport, ain't it? No spore in it, just hides. I'll get moving.
I stand before you, a man who has met that villainous blackguard demon rum and emerged triumphant from the contest. To come before you good folk to spread the true, humble gospel of temperance. My friends, think about the seductive influence King alcohol has upon our vigorous, unsuspecting youth. Recall, if you will, how the demon leads us to pain and regret, to riotous debauchery and the agony of besottedness, to the hurry, bloaty gout of habitual inviting, to the final inexorable Hades of delirium tremens. Oh, shut up, Bob. Come have a drink. I say to you, my dear friends, cast off these chains of bondage. Discard your wayward ways. Join with the good, the honest, the God-fearing people of this earth in solemnly pledging to abstain. 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 There sure is a mess of fine-looking ladies over there. Figured I'm trying some of them out. No, Hugh. I'm saving myself for the woman I love. Who would that be? I don't know. I haven't met her yet. Maybe she's over there, though. Maybe I will go over there. Maybe she is. When you figuring on heading out? Maybe you can live off your winnings, but, well, I can't do that. What the hell does that mean? Well, it means that uh, I better be finding me a new occupation. Wagering ain't doing me no good. The buffalo herding didn't help a lot, did it? No, it didn't. Well, I've been thinking on it. What I have to do. Well, the police deputy. Caleb, you're loco. I ain't loco. Well, that could turn out to be pretty dangerous work, especially hereabouts. And I ain't talking about here, I'm talking about Ralston. So, well, they know me up there, and my name will scare the fight out of half of them hellions. I'll sweet talk the rest of them. <laughs> when are you fixing on leaving? Well, time like in the morning, I guess. Gentlemen, my name is Robert W. Halliburton. Most people call me Bob. How you do? Preach a hell of a sermon, Bob. Mind if I seat myself? No, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Have yourself a drink, Bob. First class elixir here. Cures warts, hangnails, the social disease. But you was a teetotal man. We all enjoy our little jests. You'd be astonished how many free drinks I get by those trying to corrupt me. Sure had me fool. Strangely enough, I've had my share of converts to sobriety, which pleases my sense of irony. I've been led to believe that you two gentlemen go by the name of Rice and Cardiff. Uh, which is which? Who told you that? Fella told me. <laughs> Howdy, boys. You can perhaps tell I'm from the East. Yes, sir. I reckon we calculated that. Yes. New York City, in point of fact. I'm a writer and a sometimes employee of the New York Illustrated Weekly, for which I bear the title Frontier Correspondent. Needless to say, I am always on the lookout for new heroic adventures to relate to the gaping readers back home. You, sir, are the rifle champion of these parts. No offense, Doc. No, no. No, don't worry about that. He earned it. Oh, Mr. Halliburton. Uh, if you're 
you're looking for genuine heroes of the plane. Well, look no further. By Cardiff and Rice are the stuff that true heroes are made out of. That's right. Yes, sir, that is a fact. By the time I fought off a hundred... Wait, 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 All right, all right. By the time I fought off a hundred Indians when I was riding for the Pony Express, Lieutenant old Caleb here rescued the colonel's daughter from old, uh, Red... Red, red spot. No, red dog. Old red hand. <laughs> so an old red, red hands camp. Red hands. Yeah. No, Bob. I killed that great Cheyenne war chief with a single rifle shot. This here rifle. In a range of two and a half miles across a fierce wind. Mr. Halliburton. There ain't no hero as full of daring do as my friend Hugh Carter. Gentlemen, I give you Hugh Carter. Hugh Carter. Here's to all of us. All of them. Continue, gentlemen. Father, recall the time that me and Caleb here was carrying dispatches for, uh... That was, um, Phil Sheridan, I recall. Yeah, thanks, Doc. Yeah. General Phil Sheridan. We were crossing through some hostile yeah. Indian country. And we got jumped on by a band of 40 Cheyennes. And 30 Arapaho. Two youths. Old Caleb here he took care of 13 of them Cheyenne. Those two pistols you see hanging there right there in that belt. I understand, Bob. He only fired 12 shots. But one of them went through two of those Indians and killed them both. <laughs> It'd have probably gone on and killed another one. So if there weren't any left, we'd all kill them all by that time. Jumped on my old cheap feather hat. Jumped me with a knife. Where are you, Dick? Jumped on. Jumped on. All right, go ahead. Jumped on my old cheap feather hat. Jumped me with a knife. Why, Bob, I just twisted around. Took that knife and I scalped that old Cheyenne chief with his own war knife. Hmm. Old Chief Featherhat Bob stood eight feet tall. Eight feet tall. Eight feet tall. Three feet wide. Biggest Indian ever born. A meaner than a snake. All night just lying that slicker? Yeah, down there. Old boy filled up three of them notebooks while I was talking to him. Well, then you're a bigger liar than I am. <laughs> Figure on writing on them dime novels about us, Caleb. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine that? No, sir. That's what he said. Hmm. Where's Doc? Well, he rode out earlier. 
said tell you bye. Well, I'm going to hate to see you go. Yeah, me too, Caleb. I'll look you up sometime. Well, you be sure and do that. Yeah. Really been something, Hugh? It sure was, Caleb. It damn sure was. Take care. you come at a bad time. John Tyree's dead. Damn, I'm sorry to hear that. Vern's uh, likely to shoot you on sight. Yeah, I'll have to take my chances. Come back to see Libby. You. Libby's married. She's what? To burn. Burn. I'm sorry. She hit the house, Harry. In the name of God, you give it up. I rode a long way, Harry. Where? No frames. Water hole, she knows where. How soon? As soon as you can. I'll tell her. Best is up to her. How about Vern? He's off to town. But he's got a fellow here, Joe McBride. He, uh, looks after things for Vern, including Libby. Passing through, nobody. Hello, Libby. Father always wanted to see Vern and I together. I knew that. He loved this ranch. I guess he figured that was the best way to keep it in the family. Yeah, I understand that. Well, I said I'd be back. Guess I waited a little too long. 
You said a year, Hugh. I waited and waited. Not a word. I didn't know if you were dead or forgot me or found someone else. I imagined all sorts of things. It took a little longer than I figured. When Father got ill, Vern just took over. I guess during that time, I, I needed him. I knew I'd made a mistake after the first month. But by then, I was pregnant. Do you need him now? I don't love him, Hugh. I'm just something he owns, like everything else on the ranch. What about me, Libby? You know how you feel about me? Libby, Mr. Tyree. What about her? She's gone. Gone? Yes, sir. How the hell did she do that? She met someone at the water hole. Who? I don't know. And the boy? He's here. Rosita's been looking after him. She said your wife came back here, packed a few things, and said she'd be gone a few days. Well, I want to know where she went, and I want her brought back. Yes, sir. with you, and I will, but I've just got to find a way. Yeah, you find a way, but you make it fast. So I don't want to be without you anymore. I 
Terry McBride and the others looking for you for four days. Where have you been? You know where I was. Cardiff? Yes. I want out, Vern. I'm taking William and I'm leaving. I want a divorce. You ain't going anywhere, and neither is my son. No divorce. This is the Tyree Ranch. Vern! Nothing changes. You and the boy will stay right here, and McBride will make sure that you do. Good night, Libby. Oh, by the way, I'll be gone a few days. Don't try it again. Pull out this general area now. Go on. Go down there till you sober up. Stay down there. Keep out of trouble. Oh, wait a minute. How you doing, Deputy? Oh, you, Carter. You son of a gun. Boy, if you'd have been a snake, you'd bit. Good to see you. How you doing? Good to see you. I'm good. Well, where have you been? Now, we've been waiting on you. Well, I got here as soon as I could. What do you mean, we? Well, come on in here. I'll buy you a drink. We'll do that, fella, anyway. Well, I just shot his heel off. Say, if his face hurt, I'm just kind of straight. I don't believe it. You noticed that the uh, handsome one re rescuing the girl is me. Yeah, well, you'll notice over here on the cover that it says Cardiff and Rice, not the other way around. <laughs> it doesn't matter, gentlemen. You're both famous. This book is selling big. There's no reason to think the others won't. Others? Six at last count. Two more on the press. Yeah, I didn't know anybody could write that fast. Well, I have an associate back east who does the actual writing. No, I supply the imagination, the plots. Snails don't get wealthy in my business. The point is, you two are the most startling commodity to strike the world since Mr. Judson's book on Hickok and Cody. You are certified, celebrated heroes. The Cardiff Rice books are outselling all the other dime novels five to one. People are going to pay handsomely to see you two take on the best shooters in the country. Mm. Not to mention the side bets. Okay. You gotta quit that business while you're behind. Well, I can't. Gambling's in my blood. <laughs> I guarantee you, gentlemen, you are gonna like show business. I think so, huh? Are you gonna have a chance to see for yourself tonight? How's that? Tonight, you're gonna meet Wild Bill Hickok himself. He's invited you boys to perform at his Western Tent Show. There's gonna be all sorts of newspaper people there from New York, Chicago, even London, England. How about you, Bob? Doesn't sound like you're going to be there. I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be on a train going to Denver to see my doctor. I don't worry about it. It's all right. Gentlemen, I give you Cardiff and Rice, true heroes of the West. Are you accusing me of cheating at cards, mister? Bill Hill. 
Hickok is my name. The genuine Wild Bill. Army scout, soldier, lawman, town tamer. <laughs> I had to kill more men than I care to remember. All justifiably. Savage Indians, mostly. And outlaws. And ruffians. They say I've become a legend. Well, I'll just have to leave that to you good folks. We have a special added attraction. Two more real heroes of the West, Mr. Hugh Cardiff and Mr. Caleb Rice. <laughs> That's the way it was. Me and uh, my partner Hugh Cardiff here just rode down out without a scratch between us. Didn't we? Yeah, that's right. Not a, not a scratch. Michael Cardiff. I am. You're under arrest. I have a federal warrant on a charge of willful murder in the first degree. No, you hold it a minute now. I'm a deputy marshal this here town. Now, let me see what you got. It's a fugitive execution warrant. You've been sentenced to hang. Hugh, you understand what this means? Yeah, I think I do. I wouldn't do that. Come on, get out. Tell your friend to put up his weapons. It won't do him any good. Wait a minute, No, you. no. You go on. We'll see about this. Go on. Don't shoot, Caleb. Oh. Caleb, you kill him and it'll just get you a rope. We got to get him out of here. You men, lend a hand here. You're killing a dead man. You hear me? A dead man! Say, hey, you've been leading a pretty hard life. I found traces of an old bullet in there. Yeah. Caused me some trouble. This last one tore you up pretty bad. Yeah, he uh... Well, we've been talking, and well, the way things are, we figured you might want to go down into Mexico and hibernate. If you feel up to it, uh, traveling and all. Hell, I'm up to it. Don't have much choice. You'll be leaving in the morning. Now, we'll be working on a presidential pardon. 
Grant's in the White House. We'll try to get into him. In the meantime, you start using Hugh Smith. We'll be working on it. Contact you when it's safe to come back. Thanks, pal. Hey. Hey. Watch that bullet over there. He didn't quite like that old rifle of mine. About his age, my pa gave it to me. He'd do me a favor and see if he gets it. Show him how to use it. Yes, sir. That's a bandy in it, son. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to be needing a rifle. So why don't you just take this old Winchester? Thanks, Doc. For everything. Too good for us, senor. You, you, Carter. Reckon that gives you an advantage. <laughs> what I read in the newspaper, you worth the two thousand dollars. Live or dead. knew I'd amount to something. But not down here, amigo. It's not that long a ride across the border. You shoot well, but uh, it takes more skill now to face a man with a gun. You know, uh, it's not like hustling Bunch of farmers. I'll tell you one thing, you're smart, though. <clears throat> Come down here when nobody knows you. You still haven't told me who you are, friend. <coughs> Name's Holiday. Doc Holiday. Well, Mr. Holiday, what this is, it's, uh, it's called survival. That's right. I ain't no farmer. Used to be. Nobody likes to be told he can be outshot. Man's got to find that out for himself. Looks like you made it pretty expensive for these mechs. Find out for themselves. Are you looking after their interests? You just looking for an excuse to kill me for a bounty? I don't need much of an excuse. Better go away, Mr. Holiday. man, senor. Yeah. I reckon I'm drifting a mite too far in order. I'm gonna swear this, senor.
Passing through. He's dead when I found him. Figured I'd bury him. suffer from white man's justice. Yeah. There's a short rope and a long drop waiting for me. Friends are working on a pardon, but it takes time. <clears throat> what makes pain? Took a bullet a while back. Tried like hell to get it working again, but afraid it's too far gone. Not too far gone. I help you. Why should you help me? You save me from short rope, long drop card. I help you. We be even. Take long time. Great pain. We begin tomorrow. We eat now. Good cook, huh? <laughs> Not wife. Sister. Mother and father both dead now. I take Carissa back from reservation. Carissa? 
It means flower in English, doesn't it? Flower? Hugh Cardiff, of course. Carty? <laughs> That's close enough. <laughs> Carty? Yeah. Watch. You drive, Cardi. Catch. I'm sorry we're late. Dr. Bogardus, meet my associate, Jeanette. Doctor? Nice meeting you, ma'am. There he is. That's Edward Roberts. He's one of President Grant's aides. I'm sure that he can help us. I hope so. We might very well need him. Mm. Excuse me, sir. Clear. He's guilty. Damn it, man. There is not one shred of evidence to back up that claim. Hugh Cardiff will receive no pardon. Not from this administration. Didn't the president just state he intended to bind up the still raw wounds of bitterness between the North and South? He did indeed. To make this once again truly one nation under God indivisible. He said that. The grave injustice done Hugh Cardiff would seem to apply, sir. Hallelujah. Would it now? Then let me tell you something. The president, in his heart, will always be a soldier. A soldier who has seen the blood spill by thousands of young men, north and south who died honorably on the field of battle. He would never betray their memory 
by sparing the life of a convicted murderer. That's all, gentlemen. Good day, ma'am. Hold on there. If the president's anything like you, mister, we're in trouble. Got a mind like a glacier and barbar for a spine. And you can tell him from me he's also a liar. Good day, mister. Not particularly eloquent, but effective. Yeah. Let's get a drink. again. At time of rattlesnakes, you be ready. You bet. Shoulder feeling better, Carty? It sure is. Hunting here is poor. I'm going down to the valley. Come back three days. Cardiff, I leave you with Arisa. You sure you want to do that? She stays with you. What do you mean by that? You take her for wife. Now look, Ebron. I feel real strong about that girl, but I can't take her. You have woman? No. Then Arissa make you a fine wife. Yes, yeah, she would make me a fine wife. There's no doubt about that, but I can't. You think.
a beautiful woman, Laura. You understand that? A son, uh, Juno. Beautiful woman. What do you think about Gatti? Riding around out there as pleasant as you could be. All of a sudden, I'm lying on the ground looking up at this Indian. How in the hell do you know where to find me? I just followed the bounty hunters. There's a whole bunch of them wandering around out there. Led me just about straight to you, too. Old Ebron probably figured you was one of them. I saw that Indian's face. I thought, boy, my hair's bound for somebody's scalp hole. Well, I never heard of friendly Apache. You got your hair, don't you? Yeah. Old Ebron and I go back a ways. What are you doing down here, Caleb? Well, Halliburton sent me out here. Something about my pardon? Well, he's got the whole country stirred up. He's got the press and the public. Got the press and the public all over President Grant's back on account of you be driven out here in exile and all. So he figures if you come on back, there ain't much chance of anything happening to you. Yeah. Yeah. Coming with me or not? I just don't know. Things are a little different than they were. This Indian gal, she's a good woman. Could have it good here. Half then I get thinking about it, Libby. Just don't know. Well, why don't you go back and settle it? Just lay around here and let it gnaw at you. Go back and get your business done. Yeah. Might take me a couple of days. You tell Bob I'll be coming. Good.
ride out in the morning and stir up a little dust, see if I can draw some of these bounty hunters off of you. Thanks, Bart. You brought your back, huh? Crawl by your neck. 